okay so today we want to introduce you water filling this is a technique of allocating power to different sub bands different sub bands in a multi carrier system a multi carrier OFDM system this technique is used by 4G, 5G. So, what's the idea behind this technique? Idea. We have a certain power PTX which we want to allocate to different subbands because, as we know, we are using different subbands independently. Let me show it in a picture. So, this is our bandwidth. These are the different subbands. This is the bandwidth of 5G system, which is 80 megahertz. This is delta, 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 which is delta is the 15 kilohertz, 13 kilohertz, or 60 kilohertz subband width or bandwidth of a subband. Call you, uh, call it as you want. So this is the carrier. Every subband is modulated around a carrier for obvious reasons. We are using a cam modulator within a subband. Within every subband, we independently transmit cam modulation or PSK or whatever you want to transmit. We transmit it independently over different subbands in parallel. This is the scheme of OFDM as you might already know it. So what's the problem with water filling? Water filling tries to allocate power to these subbands, right? We want to allocate these powers to subband. From PTX, we are allocating power to these subbands. So what is the goal behind this allocation? Why why are doing why we want to allocate power to these subbands? Obviously we need to allocate some power to transmit something right the transmitter needs some amount of power so that it can transmit something but here we are uh, independently transmitting constellations or data signals on subbands on different subbands so the goal here is to maximize the bitrate problem is to allocate power to different subbands right we want to allocate power to different subbands to different subbands with the goal of increasing the maximizing the bitrate maximizing the bitrate and the constraint constraint is the total power should be equal to the summation of the power over i subband should be equal to the total power Oh, this is intuitive and that is we can only use the power which we which is available we cannot use more than that so so the total power which is allocated to these subbands should sum to the total power should be less or equal to the total power for maximization it should it it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean always that we have uh, the total summation of the power should be equal to the total power here the summation of the power on these subbands should be equal to the total power it can be or it can be less but it cannot be more for this it's it's clear so if it is less what we will do in that case we will come to know and if it is equal what what's the problem what's uh, what are we getting what are the consequences we will know in a while so we have to allocate power okay so we have to allocate power to these subbands right we need to allocate power to these subbands how should we do that what 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 can be what are the possible solutions i suggest you to pause your video and think of some solutions let me draw a drawing to get a clue to give you a little bit of clue let's say that this is the frequency response of the channel uh, i'm not good at drawing so forgive me for that this is frequency 
this is our whole band okay so let me use a different color these are the different sub bands mm -hmm. okay these are the, the width of the sub band is delta as i said earlier delta can be 15 30 60 whatever you want to choose it doesn't really matter for us for water filling it's so here we have frequency response of the channel higher frequency response means channel is good which means here the channel is good here the channel is good here the channel is bad here the channel is bad so attenuation is one upon hf square okay so here are some sub bands for example if we focus on this sub band it's really good if we focus on this sub band it's good if we focus on this sub band it's bad we might want not to use it or we might want to transmit more power on this sub band so how should we transfer our power to these sub bands let me let me copy this if i can okay copy okay here it is okay good so how we will allocate what are the possible strategies what can we do what are the possible strategies to allocate power either we allocate same power to all the we allocate same power to all tones to all bands sub bands sub bands between these are called also tones because if you see they are modulated around the carrier this is tone f is tone zero tone one tone two tone so on, so on and so forth okay so either we allocate same power to all sub bands this is a quite intuitive choice we we don't care about the frequency response we allocate same power to all the sub bands so in that case if n is the number of sub bands number of sub bands the allocation will be ptx by l for each sub band so the power each sub band will get will be pi equal to ptx by l but ptx by n sorry because n is the number of sub bands but does that lead to the maximization of bit rate does that lead to maximization of bit rate mm, not true for the maximization of bit rate then what is the another strategy we allocate more power to bad sub bands this is intuitive i mean at least uh, this is intuitive because what we do we try to compensate for the frequency response so we allocate more power to sub bands which are bad so but this leads to maximization of the bit rate not not known yet we don't know it yet then the third idea is to transmit more power on good sub bands on good sub bands and does this lead to the maximization of bit rate no or yes we don't know yet so that's the that's what you are going to know about after this which is the technique which maximizes the bit rate what is the technique which maximizes the bit rate should we allocate equally should we allocate more power to the good sub bands more power here or more power here to compensate the sub bands so let's look at our problem if we look at the bit rate uh, which is given by the bit loading formula bit loading formula as you might all know rb is less or equal to log 2 1 plus <coughs> prx <coughs> by pn okay so what's what's the problem with this formula this is the bit rate this is the bandwidth okay so this is the noise term which is inherent 
which is unavoidable to a communication channel it shows we suppose that noise pn is independent for each tone noise is independent for each tone here is one by gamma as well independent for each tone noise is independent for each tone also gamma which is which takes care one by gamma is one by gamma s gamma c by gamma gamma margin let's call this gamma as gamma margin this is sub optimality deviation of constellation from ideal shannon constellation this is the coding gain this for this is also independent from the tone so we don't care about it so what we are left with is rb less or equal to b log 2 1 plus prx by gamma pn i copy the expression and then i write rb less or equal to b log 2 1 plus prx let's omit this because they are not involved in the maximization of the bitrate so if we divide rb by b we get log 2 1 plus prx and for the ith subband we can write rb by b is m which is number of bits per symbol is less or equal to log 2 1 plus prx we can write as pi by alpha i because pi is the power allocated to the subband alpha i is the overall attenuation overall attenuation so prx is equal to pi by alpha i which is the power allocated to the subband and alpha i is the attenuation of the subband so we can rewrite our formula here okay so copy yeah, what the hell I should go here okay so here is the formula so for all mm, so, uh, no. so for all subbands we can write m equal to summation mi i running from 1 to n where n is the number of subbands so we can write m less or equal to summation i running from 1 to n log 2 1 plus pi by alpha i this is our formula for the bitrate maximization we want to maximize this thing because uh, this is the number of bits per symbol bits per symbol because we know the symbol rate is constant is equal to b so rb is m times rs where rs is the number of bits per symbol so ideally we want to use let's say 8 cam because it will we have 2 raised power m m is equal to 3 or maybe 16 cam because m will be equal to 4 so the thing that will be involved in the maximization of the bit rate is this m because it's also known as as far uh, it's also known as bits per symbol or the spectral efficiency which means number of bits per symbol of a cam constellation so ideally we want to have a higher cam constellation because it will be involved in the maximization of the bitrate so how should we allocate power in order to have the maximization of this bitrate for overall bitrate which is which includes all the subbands should we allocate more power to the should we allocate more power to bad subbands equal power or uh, as i said more power to the good subbands so the function we want to maximize is m less or equal to summation i m log 2 sorry i get log 2 1 plus p i by alpha so here what we have now is we have this p i which is the allocated power to each subband and this is the attenuation of each subband under total power constraint as i mentioned we have a power constraint we cannot allocate more than ptx so as you might as you have figured it out the total power of the subband should equal to this ptx so p1 plus p2 plus p3 should be equal to ptx or 
summation pi should be equal to ptx or summation pi minus ptx should be equal to zero which means that the sum of the total uh, power of each subband is equal to the total total power available power budget called also power budget okay so now our goal is to maximize this under constraint summation pi equal to ptx but this is a really difficult problem to solve we have a problem we have a constraint we would want to transform this problem into an another problem but unconstrained one we transform this problem from a constrained problem to an unconstrained one how would we do that we write it rewrite the problem as omega equal to f plus lambda times g omega which is function of x1 x2 so on xn comma lambda equal to f which is function of x1 x2 so on xn plus lambda g of x1 x2 xn okay so what is f for us f is this function we want to maximize so summation summation i running from 1 to n log 2 1 plus pi by alpha i and the constraint what is our constraint constraint is summation pi minus ptx is equal to 0 okay perfect and lambda is just a scalar we introduced to to help us in transforming this problem into an unconstrained one and then we look we look for partial derivatives for omega we look for partial derivatives for omega remember we want to maximize this fx rather than maximizing this we are maximizing this we want to maximize this under power constraint we want we are indirectly doing the same thing but we are maximizing this without any constraint so we set d omega by d p i equal to zero which means d omega by d p one equal to okay let me first rewrite the expression overall expression of omega so omega is equal to summation i running from one to n log two one plus p i by alpha i plus summation p i minus p t x this is the overall function of omega so there is no constraint now the constraint is taken care by omega itself as we will see uh, in subsequent uh, derivation as we set partial derivatives to zero ah there is lambda here i forgot so let me rewrite more clearly summation one and one log two one plus p i or alpha i plus lambda summation p i minus p t x i have to copy it again okay this is omega okay this is copy go there okay. oh no okay so this is omega so we look for partial derivatives with respect to p1 because we want to maximize we want to maximize omega we want to maximize the bit rate we want to maximize the total allocated bit, uh, total bit rate of the system of the OFDM system of the multi-carrier system so in order to maximize we set the partial derivatives of the omega equal to zero now omega is function of pi uh, we set the we set omega equal to zero partial derivatives to zero so we go for partial derivatives with respect to p and lambda because uh, they are the ones that are responsible for our maximization problem so what we do calculate this this will be log 2 e 1 by 1 plus pi over alpha i times 1 by alpha i plus lambda because here if you see summation pi it will be only for p1 it will be only p1 so p1 and p1 will go out so this will be only lambda 
similarly for d omega by dp2 we get log 2e should be 1 this should be 1 sorry for that 1 by 1 plus p2 by alpha 2 1 by alpha 2 plus lambda d omega by dpi which is generic log 2e 1 by 1 plus pi by alpha i 1 over alpha i and d omega by d lambda finally this will be zero this will be lambda out so summation pi minus ptx so we now equate all to zeros equate everything to zero so if you see that we have we had our problem with this constraint now we change it into a another problem and this constraint is automatically satisfied once we set d omega by d lambda to zero this constraint is already automatically satisfied so we transformed our problem constraint problem into an unconstrained problem now we look for the zeros of this partial derivatives so we get log 2 let me copy a generic expression so that this will be true for every expression then okay copy go 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 paste okay so this is d omega by d p i but this is d p 2 okay let's do it for d p 2 okay no worries so it will be equal to log 2 e alpha alpha 1 by alpha 2 plus p 2 okay so is this correct alpha 2 this is yes this is correct equal plus lambda equal to 0 okay perfect so now what are we left with uh, if we try to tweak this expression this will be alpha 2 plus p2 by log 2e plus ah wait a second i i will do it like this way log 2e by alpha 2 plus p2 plus lambda equal to 0 let me transfer this to the okay let us do like this way alpha 2 plus p2 is equal to minus lambda okay so we rewrite it as p2 plus alpha 2 is equal to some constant because lambda is constant log 2 is constant so we write it as a constant let's say p2 plus alpha 2 is equal to c because they are not involved in our maximization they are the same log 2 is, is constant lambda is also a scalar which is constant and it is same for every partial derivative it's same for the every tone so it's a scalar which we uh, injected manually so it doesn't matter in our maximization so p2 plus alpha 2 is equal to c p1 plus alpha 1 is equal to c because it's same then the generic pn plus alpha n is equal to c if we sum this summation of p1 plus p2 plus so on pn plus summation of alpha is equal to nc so summation pi plus summation alpha is equal to nc or c is equal to summation pi plus summation alpha i by n or in other words c is equal to ptx plus summation alpha i by n and here our um, pi plus alpha i is equal to c so these are the two equations which are involved in maximization of the bitrate maximization of the bitrate if we allocate power in such a way in this way according to these set of equations we will have maximization of the bitrate now what's here alpha i is the attenuation of the i -th sub band c is a constant which tells us how much we can fill fill the water mm, let me show you a brief example let's say alpha one for let's say there are three sub bands alpha one equal to 20 alpha two equal to 40 alpha three equal to let's say 100 let's say the total power is 110 okay so 
what we are going to do we have three subbands okay this is alpha 20 this is 40 alpha 1 alpha 2 and this is alpha 3 which is 100 so what we have to do we have to allocate power to these subbands we have to fill the water what is the level of the water what is the what's the how much we can fill in the water up to what level can we fill that is determined by this constant c so c, if we calculate c 110 plus summation alpha i this is 20 40 is 60 60 and 100 is 160 divided by 3 so it's around 270 by 3 270 by 3 is 90 okay if i did it right so we have our water level is here 90 which is c remember that these alpha i's are the attenuations which are normalized so they are there 20 40 and 100 so the water level is 100 90 now the total now how should we allocate the power we should allocate the power about around this equation so pi plus alpha i is equal to c so p1 is equal to c minus alpha 1 c is 90 minus alpha 1 so 70 here and for p2 90 minus 40 is 50 right yes 90 minus 100 so we cannot allocate power to this sub band this sub band is bad we don't use it at all okay so here we are using this sub band and we are using this sub band uh, and we are not using this sub band at all and this leads to the maximization of the bitrate if we go for the bitrate formula fi mi if we see what are we transmitting on this this band which constellation we are using this band on this band we can write m equal to log 2 1 plus pi by alpha i equal to log 2 1 plus pi what is pi it is 70 times alpha i divided by alpha oh sorry i messed up a bit 70 by 20 okay so this is uh, this is 3 around 3 plus so let's say this is this is 3 dot something but that's rounded to the nearest integer which is 3 so 3 plus 1 is 4 so we are transferring here m is 2 so m equal to 2 which means 2 raised power to 4 so we are transmitting 4 qm on this band which has the lowest attenuation and then on this at this band we are transmitting mi equal to lesser log 2 1 plus Power transmitted power is 50 by 40 this is close to 1 so we are transmitting 2 psk while the third we are not using at all so this choice of constellations leads to the maximization of the bit rate so what are we transmitting in total how many bits what is the spectral efficiency of the total we can write mi m equal to summation mi which is 4 plus 2 it's 4 all 6 bits per symbol but it, this figure doesn't really matter. If we had known how many bits are there, then we can calculate what's the overall spectral efficiency or total bits used. How many bits are we transmitting? We can still calculate how many bits are we transmitting using this. But uh, this is the idea. So what we do here is that we allocate power to these subbands in such a way that we allocate more power to the lower sub band, uh, to the good sub band, to the sub band having lower attenuation. So what? So out of the three strategies we presented, the third one seems to maximize the bit rate. Intuitively, we should say that uh, we should expect that we should um, allocate more power to bad sub bands, but that doesn't lead to maximization of the bit rate. We allocate more power to less uh, to good subbands with higher hf or lower alpha attenuation so this is regarding water filling i hope i made it look a simple concept it's not a big deal knowing water filling